Okay, we are live somewhere. Let's see where we're live. It says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So let's see which Facebook page it is on. <laughs> this is interesting. It says the host. Uh oh. Oh, it is on my page. So we're going to go with my page. <laughs> I can't believe this, y'all. I can't believe this. Oh, you can tag you know. the other other pages or, you yeah, know. Yeah, let me, let me try and see what I do when I do that. Let's see. How do I tag? Thank y'all for joining us. We having technical issues tonight, but my guests, they over here helping me out. We're going to do what we need to do technically. And it. let's see. Oh, I can just maybe say at. at um, okay. Greater you. At the greater you. Come on, technology. Come on, BJ. Help us, BJ. Girl. It, it, women leaders walk the talk. I'm tagging both. And I can't share it. That was the only thing I was going to try to do was share it, but it doesn't look like it lets me share it right now. But it's all good. So we're going to get, we're just going to jump in. We'll actually maybe have more people on tonight coming directly from my page. So let me just jump in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to those who are here. Uh, you are in the right place. Yes, you're still in the right place. This is Women Leaders Walk the Talk. And I guess I should say this is a special edition. <laughs> this is a special edition that we're having for February. And I'm even going to point out this is leap year today. Uh, mm -hmm. So shout out to all of my leap year babies. Happy birthday for that. Um, and maybe that's why we're having a special night tonight right. as well. Very so, Th that part, very unique. So for those who haven't joined from this page, Women Leaders Walk the Talk, what do we do? We basically, I, well, not basically, I bring on some amazing women leaders to help amplify the voice of women leadership across all spaces, right? Um, and I do understand that there are already voices out there. I don't think this is the end all to be all platform, but I do believe that we need to uh, continue to increase the, the volume, to increase the uh, number of platforms and outlets that allow for uh, this information to continue to be shared. And so while on Women Leaders Walk the Talk, the point is for us to be able to connect, to collaborate and be empowered. I want us to leave being empowered. I want us to feel good while we're on here, but this has to be about activation. Mm -hmm. So while we do have, you know, while we do want to make sure that everyone feels uh, welcomed and uh, part of the process, we definitely want to make sure that we, um, look, I've got people joining on. We want to still make sure that we are activating and creating um, Maybe call to actions, I should say. There should be call mm -hmm. to actions after this. I think that's the best way to put it. So thank you all for joining. For those who are on the live, you all, please just drop in the chat. It looks like we got a little freezing happening, but drop in the chat where you're from and maybe how you're doing this evening. Evening, um, Go ahead and put that in there. So and I'm also kind of making some changes here. Let's see. I don't think I can hide that, but we're going to uh, keep going. That's that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, uh, Tabitha. We got folks in here from Memphis. We're just going to keep it going. So every episode, we talk women in leadership. I think that's really important. Every single episode, we talk women and leadership. And I always like to throw an aspect into that intersection, right? So tonight, we're going to talk about personal reflection mm. and growth. Um, I'm a thinker. For those who don't know me, I am a thinker, probably to a fault, right? But I believe I should always be um, kind of looking behind me in retrospect, right? What's happening around me? How have I shown up? Um, how do I want to show up going in the future, right? So I'm even looking in the future, always thinking, always self-reflecting because I find it to be so important. And so, heck, my company was even birthed on four core values. And the first one is self-awareness. And the only way you get to that self-awareness is through self-reflection, like that intentional, mo those intentional moments that you take with yourself to really um, see where you are and see how you want to move. So I don't think we come anywhere close to mastering self-awareness because it's co continual, right? You don't master it, I don't think. Um, but I think you do ensure that you have, one, the ability and the willingness to self-reflect. So you want to mm -hmm. make sure that you have that willingness. So um, that self-reflection simply leads us to growth. And that's yeah. why I wanted to talk about the importance of self-reflection um, and the importance of growth tonight in that intersection of women and leadership. 
So um, in the chat, I think I saw some folks that were here from Memphis. Um, you all continue to communicate in the chat. Let us know where you are and what are your thoughts as we are chatting. But let's um, get into what we all came here for tonight. Y'all <laughs> like spotlight. Yes, it is spotlight time. Um, so I like to say this. I'm excited too, because I have what I like to say, some truth tellers and some light bearers on the show with me tonight, like truth tellers and light bearers. And I mean it. And I could not be happier to have with us tonight, BJ Word and Wendelin Payne. And I'm going to introduce them. I see them already. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I give you all a proper introduction. BJ Word, she is a wordsmith like a walking and breathing. I don't know if she likes this word tag with her, but lyricist. Like, I believe every time you open your mouth, there is a music being told. There is Whoa. a story being told. Wow. Like, so, and, and the way, oh, I'm not even going, I'm just let y'all hear it tonight. Like, <laughs> the way she going to lay it out for us and keep us on point, I cannot wait. Uh, and then at least that's what I like to call her. So she can turn a message into a movement a message mm -hmm. to a movement. And aside from that, she's a licensed uh, psychotherapist. So do not try and play mind tricks with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and a professional speaker and mindset coach. And so um, she's heavy in the mental health space. And BJ has a gift in helping um, overwhelmed women prioritize, prioritize their needs. And she was kind of snatching my edges a little bit before we came on live tonight, mm -hmm. too, um, helping me through some overwhelming moments. So I want to say, just stop and just give hand round of applause for having BJ on tonight. Thank Hello. you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then Wendy, Wendelin, Win pain. She's my walking light. Like yes. I want to say that you are my walking light. So have you ever, have y'all ever had someone walk in a room and you had to put on your shades? I got on glasses, but you had to oh. put on your shades uh, because their light was so bright. And it's not because of the shade. Like nowadays we say put the shade on because somebody being shady, but no ma'am. When Wendelin walks in a room, you honestly see the light that comes from her and she exudes it and her her leadership shows from that. And so, yep, that's Wendelin. She didn't even notice what I was saying tonight. Um, but it only makes sense that this yes, light bearer, that she has the ability to connect with people. She's a senior HR representative. I'm sorry, senior HR business partner at TK Elevator Manufacturing. And I like to point out the manufacturing piece, because when we talk about women in leadership, I think that that word alone speaks volumes for uh, some experiences and some insight that I know you're going to be able to offer us. And so in her everyday life, Wendelin strives to impact every uh, every person she encounters and always in the forefront of her mind is this quote. My smile is my logo. My personality is my business card. And when she gave it to me, and that's all I'm gonna say on the quote, I she was it. telling every like every bit of her. So welcome to Women Leaders Walk and Talk, Wendelin Payne. <laughs> so true. Jay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I tried not to go too long on both of y'all, but y'all y'all really are my my walking wordsmith and my light bearer. And those are probably interchangeable for both of you. I think that's that's what's even unique is that you all have the ability to interchange in between some amazing gifts. So with that, we're going to jump right in. And this is, you know, however you all choose to jump in. One word to describe leadership and give us your why behind it. Hmm. Wendell, you want to go first or you want me to go first? <laughs> I'm trying to narrow down the words <laughs> because can it be a I, phrase? Does it have to be just one single word, or can it be? We, we'll give you the phrase. I always go through this. We'll go. We'll get. We'll give you a pass on a phrase if you got to. Consistency, empathy, mm. and transparency. Mm. Mm. That's good. And that, that's, good. that's so. When I would say consistency. Mm. Be the same. It, I'm not. I'm not taking away from you. Have to interact with different situations based on this and understand the dynamics of who you're dealing with. But be the same. Be consistent. Where if you come in on one day, you're this way, and then the next day you're a whole nother way. You, or how you handle one group in the foundation of it is the same. Mm -hmm. Because people pay attention, they know when there's a difference. So if I can't expect consistency out of you as my leader, then we're already starting off 
on the wrong foot. Mm -hmm. So, and then the empathy part of it, for me, I found that that's something that connects me to a leader. One that's not afraid to show empathy with others. Because for me, that's currency in some formats. Because if you can't empathize with what I'm dealing with, I'm not saying that you have to change the rules and make special provisions, but at least have some sense of empathy. Because sometimes I need to understand where's the human, even in human resources. Ooh. That's mm. the truth. <laughs> that's, that's just, you know. Okay, that's it. I think that's enough. What did I say? Okay. That was good. Though. I'm going to tell you what I walked away with was empathy. Is, it's a form of currency. Yes, like, that's um, good. That. Like that one stuck mm-hmm. with me. If y'all could put that in the chat, empathy is a form um, of currency. currency. Yeah, I like that. I love that. And your consistency is real as well. Like that was a very good, good point. Mm-hmm. You, you got me with that. Empathy is, is currency. Because if we could do more of that, oh, we would, you know, just across the board, we'd be in a whole different ball game in so mm-hmm. many ways. In a positive direction, right? In a positive direction. Yeah, in a positive yes. direction. What about yeah. you, BJ? What's your phrase? Phrase, right? Because a uh, word is my real life last name, y'all, from birth. That's my daddy name. So I, it's not a stage name. <laughs> so I usually have a lot of words. So, um, but my phrase is that leadership is having the courage enough to see a vision for somebody else's life and the boldness to act on it. And so my why behind that is that uh, managers kind of just kind of control and and manage what's already there. Leaders have a vision for somebody else. So I need to be able Mm -hmm. to look into your life and see something that maybe you don't see. Mm -hmm. And then I need to be bold enough to act on it. So when we think about leading especially women in the community, we look at a, at something as a problem, right? We, we're looking right. at problems to fix, but we also seeing, I see this group of people right here and I believe that they can be over here. Whether they believe it for themselves or not, I got a vision for them. Kristen, you didn't realize what you were doing, but when you introduced us, you were leading. That was leadership because that is you having a vision for who I am, whether I believe that about myself or not, that is yeah. what you are able to look at to me and see. The boldness to act on that, I'm about to bring these women on this show. So not only are you having the courage, which is in the face Mm -hmm. of fear, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to call out something that I see, but then I'm about to act on this thing and I'm Mm -hmm. about to put this into into play and I'm about to develop you, whether you are ready or not. (laughs) Be very person. But now as a leader, I'm about to develop based on the vision that that I see for you. Ooh. Y'all ready tonight? Let me get my wad out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My reactions. There you go. There go my claps. I can't do snaps. <laughs> Be just- Y'all are true. First of all, leadership is having the courage, period, right? Mm-hmm. Stop there. Like, describe what is courage? What is courage? Yeah, I, I believe it is a feeling, first of all. To me, that's the difference in the two. The courage is how I feel. Boldness is what I do with, mm-hmm. with the courage that I feel, right? And so uh, to me, it's this feeling um, that I can do even when I'm afraid to do. Mm. That's what I, that's what I would, uh, how I would sum up courage. Oh, wow. And you got to pull it from somewhere. You got to pull it from Come somewhere. On, BJ. I love it, love it. So those are our words. I'm going to just pull out the, a couple words that we heard. Consistency and empathy on the side of Wendelin and then courage and boldness on the side of BJ. And I always like to ask that question at the beginning because our words that we use to describe leadership simply become the thread, one of this conversation, but they typically speak volumes to how you actually carry out your leadership on an everyday basis, right? Mm -hmm. Or your expectations of what leadership should look like even when you're being led, right? Even Mm -hmm. if you're not the leader, but when you're leading others, Mm -hmm. you're looking for those things as well. So I got a couple questions, but before I really delve off into that, and I said a little bit about what you all do, um, I think it's important for our audience to kind of know just a little bit about your journeys into your spaces, because you are leading in your spaces today. But if you could give us the short version Mm -hmm. of of how you got here, share share your story about how you arrived today as BJ and Wendelin. Wow, I think I'm still arriving as BJ, honestly. Uh, but I, I feel like um, kind of tragedy set me on the course of where I am with um, being a therapist. And so mm-hmm. having a, a moment in my life where I looked around and I'm like, where where is somebody to help? 
with this situation. And that moment was pivotal for me. And that's what determined, set me on my course. Like, you know what? I don't see anybody. The help didn't show up. This is, is a major event. We lost a student in a school and the help didn't show up. So mm -hmm. I said, let me go and try to figure out how to be the help. And I started it out on my journey towards getting my master's to become a counselor. So, um, and, and I've had my own struggles <laughs> as well. And I'm very transparent uh, about that. So uh, right now I'm just in a space of um, individual counseling. Most of my practice is women because that's who I'm passionate about working um, with. But then I also do mindset coaching and professional speaking is my heart. Mm, come on, heart. I love it. I love it. And thank, thank you for sharing your journey and even pointing out like you do this, but there is a vulnerability. A lot of times when we think about, you know, psychotherapists, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. or counselors or coaches even, oh, they got their life together. Everything's mm -hmm. perfect. Um, but no, it's a process and you can still do and deliver, right? I think that's Absolutely. what yeah. as we are being human, we can still help. But I love that you saw a need mm -hmm. and you became the answer for mm -hmm. them, right? You became a right. part of the answer. So thank you that's for good. filling the gap. I will say that. Thanks for yeah. filling the gap. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. <laughs> Come on, Wendelin, what you got for us? I was thinking through my head. I was listening to BJ and still trying to figure out how I'm going to condense this. So here's the condensed version. Okay. <laughs> my condensed version is my first internship in high school was under Mayor Willie Harrington's internship program and I worked for the summer in high school at Federal Express at that time and it was in the compensation department mm. it was my first exposure to seeing black women leading I was in the ninth grade summer mm. and I came home and I said I don't even know what they're doing but they're at the front of the, the conference room and all of us sitting around listening to them they wear, they wear suits they have pantyhose on and they have heels. I don't know what it is they're doing, but that's what I'm going to be. Mm. And after that, all the rest of the school years, I didn't want to wear tennis shoes anymore. I knew I was supposed to be in a suit. Didn't know what it was going to be. Fast forward through years of um, going to college, but needing to step out of college because single parent home needed to make money. So those of us that were in school, we had to step out of that and go to work so we could support the home, right? And mm -hmm. fast forward later on, got a chance to finish to work in temporary jobs, to get an opportunity to go into HR. And now my current role after going through different roles is it's, even though it's a senior HR business partner, mainly what I do is employee engagement, community relations, and now college relations. My focus right now is to teach a whole nother generation about the industry I'm in because there mm -hmm. aren't as many that know about it. Right here in this city, there are opportunities for college students that are pursuing their education to have a career in a billion dollar industry. And not everybody's talking about that. Mm -hmm. And then reach back to high school students and help them understand you taking up a trade. Guess what? The elevator industry has an opportunity for you. You're going to, and so that's what I do. And as far as employee engagement is creating opportunities for our employees to know that they're valued so they can feel connected to what we're doing as a company. Mm -hmm. And then on my side, recently, I get called in to lead people's projects, come in and they have an event. They're like, hey, I need someone to lead this. But someone else saw this in me. Like BJ said earlier, mm -hmm. what you were doing, Christine, this, this is what somebody else, a good friend of mine saw in me and pushed me out there. I love it, I love it. So, and I, I love what I do. I tell people, you need, you are called when you come to HR. Because you are serving people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, if not, and if you didn't come for that reason. It'll show. And, and no no shade, no mm -hmm. pettiness or anything like that. It'll no. show in you, you, you're the weariness of it. It just, it'll show. We'll get into that a little later. But yeah. So I know I'm called to this field. I'm going to just put it like that. I, I know it. I'm called to this field. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I and that's why I was saying so befitting that you are because fitting that you are because you are a connector and you are a people uh, person. So thank you for sharing that. And I know we're going to touch on a little bit more about the journey. Um, what I was going to talk about next was breaking barriers. Mm. So what has been look y'all sat up. I saw that BJ. I saw you. <laughs> 
<laughs> the most, <laughs> what has been the most significant, the most significant barrier you faced as a woman in leadership and how did you overcome it? Um, do you feel your approach was revolutionary uh, within your industry or your sector? So give us a time. How did you handle it? And do you feel like it, it helped to move the industry that you were in or not? Or the sector? Yeah. You want me to go first? Oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> For me, I wasn't in a leadership role per title. For me... I feel like I led the the opportunity for um, people, uh, women like myself, especially young women in the corporate space. Mm. Uh, I was working in a entry level role, and I had an opportunity to go into a more elevated role. But I was supporting five leaders that didn't look like me, and they were all male. And what I went through in that process was very stressful. And oftentimes I cried because to be able to understand when you know that you are going through different levels of discrimination or bullying, but you don't have the verbiage, you don't, this is something you haven't really experienced and you don't really know who to lean on, then how do you navigate through it? And what I would say is how I believe, even though I wasn't leading people, how I showed up every day and did my job to the point when I exited, when they came to me, I already had my stuff packed. Mm. And they created from when I left there, when they wouldn't create it, when I left there, they created a leave of absence due to stress, but I was encountering it mm. at that time. The, but it was that. So for me, yes, I went through it. I learned from it. And so as I coach other young professionals or students coming through it and they're going into the workforce or even they're encountering professors, I'm able to share with them so they can recognize the different things and how to navigate it, how to be an advocate for themselves when they go to HR, those type of things. So I hope I answered your question, but that's how I see how I changed and impacted my industry. I wasn't by title a manager or a leader, but by my actions, I was because I showed up did my job mm -hmm. and those type of things and learn from it and help pass it on. Did you answer my question correctly? Absolutely. You did. <laughs> uh, Cause it was honest. It was truth. And I feel like what I heard was yes, mm -hmm. change, you know, that particular sector, you brought awareness, you brought attention. Sometimes our changes don't happen. We don't get to experience the change, but that doesn't mean that we aren't creating it. Uh, and we have to be okay with sometimes not being able to stick around and see what the change feels like, right? That may not have been what our role was. Um, but even though you necessarily left that space, you still continue, right? You continue, like you said, with your mentors and all that. So I appreciate you being the catalyst and being able to take what was a an experience that we don't want anybody to have to experience. And I've been in those shoes. I've been in those rooms where... I'm the only, you know, soft leg. I'll, I'll use that terminology if we, you know, have to use a term, you know, using just something to say. Um, but that is a hard space. And to be able to stand up for yourself and use your voice in whatever way that looks like, mm -hmm. that's not a small feat at all. Not a small feat at all. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. What about you, BJ? Mine, you know what? So many different things came to mind, but honestly, it's more on a micro level. When you said okay. the word barrier, the, the biggest barrier that I've had to break through is right here. Mm -hmm. I have had to learn in my life to stop being my own worst enemy and start being my own best friend. I have had to learn how to be to uh, enjoy my own company, to accept me for who I am, right? And so um, the way that I push the needle in my industry is by doing that individually with each and every woman that I come in contact with, because baby, you got to be the leader over your own life and you can't let life lead you and run you around and your emotions run you around and social media run you around. And so since I have gone through that with God's help, all right, um, just breaking through this barrier and being able to be transparent enough to share my story all over social media. All right. There are videos, honey, you can find me saying something that I've been through. But each and every day teaching um, women, sometimes all day long, I have so many sessions, but I'm teaching them to get out of their own way. Stop yeah. being so hard on yourself. Stop worrying, dealing with yourself from a place of judgment. Right. And I think that, you know, even even on a bigger level, just seeing 
um, people look at my life and they, oh, she went to six countries last year, blah, blah, blah. And that is so great. But also being able to be real and being able to be touchable and being able yeah. to say, you can do this too. I'm, yes. I'm not rich, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that just um, helps with the stigma that we still have so much in the black community about going to therapy and about this strong black woman thing. Put 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 that down, take it off. We're not doing that right now, okay? Um, and so I think that's how, on a micro level, that's what's been important to me is breaking through that that barrier for myself and then teaching other women how to break through that barrier too in that mental health space. Is it really micro though, right? Look, you know I'm, what? I'm, it I'm, may I'm, not be. I didn't either. I didn't either. <laughs> is, it, is it really micro? Because those women, I get what you're saying. You're kind of one on one with it, but those women, they show up in larger spaces, right? So yeah. there really is this you know, spread this wide net that you really are casting that may be mm -hmm. starting at this point. Right. Like, okay, okay, micro, because I promise I'm over here. I'm ready to take on the world behind this. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, Chris. That's what I'm over here to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Are you good? <laughs> I'm apologizing to myself and I'm owning that. It really yeah. is. Okay. Um, for, for whatever it is, I'm trying not to give myself grace in. Uh, Cause yeah, I, I, we do it. We try to give ourselves do grace. We've yeah. been trained to do that, though. That's right. That's right. We, we, everything, everything that surrounded us has trained us to believe that this is how you have to show up, mm -hmm. and you don't get to give give yourself grace. You can give it to everybody else, mm -hmm. and it's it it didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So, working through it, getting past it is not an overnight thing because you're re we're really retraining our thoughts. Absolutely. It's it's yeah, retraining unlearning. like you, you're unlearn it's unlearning and like you said, BJ, we were talking earlier. I had to lit nothing against Facebook. Please don't 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 get up. <laughs> nothing against it, but it says being more self aware, I had to find a way to di di disconnect mm -hmm. because y'all know y'all got those iPhones where it tells you your weekly activity. And when it started giving me the summary of how many hours that I averaged a day, and then you look at the breakdown of it, and I was just like, "So what did I get out of it? Mm -hmm. Did I? How did I look at myself differently?" Mm -hmm. I, and but but it was like I said, it didn't happen overnight, right? And Chris, to give myself grace, okay, I peeked back in there for a minute, and I came back. I'm all right. Oh wait a minute, I heard somebody was this was it's okay, but you got to extend the grace. Because we're still evolving. Yes. Yes. We, we are. are. Each of us are a woman. I'm a woman. You're a woman. But we are evolving mm -hmm. constantly. Because mm -hmm. if we don't, then we become stagnant. Then oh. we don't grow. Then we mm -hmm. limit ourselves. And it's like we just got only two miles down the road and there's eight more miles to go. And the, the 10th mile is where this whole nother world is ready to open up for us. But we're stuck mm -hmm. at the two mile. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. now you're making me th and this wasn't one of my questions but how do you get unstuck when you have found yourself mm -hmm. in a stuck spot because we're gonna have them because mm -hmm. as we're growing new challenges new things come or we're set up we're we're um conditioned a little differently for each season so it's new right and we might get stuck again what have you done to get unstuck what is, I mean, what is in that? my community has changed mm. it has shrunk. Mm. <laughs> it's not as it's not as wide it has shrunk because I love people. I really do. But I had to become more aware and it came from help from my community. I'm aware of who's heading down the same path as me. When I talk to you on the phone, is it the same conversation? Are we rehearsing the same things? Did I did I get help from the conversation? Was I a help to you? Were you a help to me? Mm -hmm. Well, that should be about the relationship. Yes, it is. We should be actually helping each other. And I'll be honest with you, this this came from the community that I I wind up in, and it helped me to be more aware. That's one part, the community, and then the other part is becoming more honest and true with myself. Then yeah, I I don't have to look like that one. I don't have to do what she does. What mm -hmm. do I do good? Mm. and it's no paid in, in paying attention to what I do I do this really good so I'm not gonna worry about the stuff I'm not doing great I'm gonna sharpen this on what I do good I'm gonna polish it it's a it's a practice but we've been taught no don't bring too much attention to yourself mm. no no don't be don't don't do that but it's not necessarily 
a good thing because if you are always pushing the attention and I'm preaching to myself right now, pushing attention on everyone else, then that psychologically can play on you when you all by yourself and then that voice start talking to you like, see everybody else thriving and doing good. Don't nobody encourage you. How can they encourage you? You always encourage everybody else. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, she's fine. Mm -hmm. She's fine. Ooh, those circles matter. I love yes. it. Those circles matter. And, be, and being aware of it and being okay with changing the circles when they need to be changed. Amen. Yes. As my circle when I was 15, when I was 25, when I was 35, when I'm going on blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it, it will continue to change. It's going to grow. It's going to shrink. The, the characters will start to look different. Some characters will look the same. And I'm blessed. You know, we're blessed when we can have those people who have, you know, been... Uh, staples and they aren't those people that help us stay stuck right mm -hmm. um, but definitely being mindful like you don't get to do the assessment you don't get to change that circle if you're not doing the assessment and doing the work so mm -hmm. I, I you pointed out yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry no I just what you were saying and then I was like wait hold up I want to hear what BJ had to say on her today that was just my part I know, look, I'm, I'm right here. I wasn't going yeah. on. <laughs> you know what? When I think about, because we can get stuck at different times in life, right? You know, in different seasons. But when I think about the, the my 30s were a huge stuck point. They really were the whole decade, baby. It was oh. a stuck point. And I had to, honestly, the, the, the thing for me was unlearning. Like Wendelin was saying earlier, I had to unlearn so many things and learn something else. And I had to stop and ask myself, where are these thoughts even coming from? Who taught me this? Who told me that I always had to be doing, doing, doing? I always had to be performance-based. I always had to be going. And the more I struggle, the better I am, the more my worth is, all right? I had to unlearn that. And, and you know, a lot of these lessons that we were taught, God bless their heart, they came from my mama and she got it from her mama and she got it from her mama. And if we go back far enough, they got it from Master's Plantation, okay? And it wasn't helping nobody but him to have you working yourself to death. And then we just passed that right on alone. So yeah. I had to unlearn a whole lot of stuff. That was step number one. Step two, y'all, this was just happening to me about two weeks ago. God had to catch me up by my show like this here. He did it real gentle. But he still caught me and he had to remind me, you know what? A lot of these words you're saying about yourself, they're not my words. They're not his word. Come on, BJ. I didn't say that. I didn't tell you you was behind. I didn't tell you you're not doing enough. I didn't tell you you needed to be somewhere in life other than where you are right now. I didn't tell oh, you to have a whole bunch of regret about the things. that Was that a right decision? And how I get right here? I bumped my head too many times. He said, I didn't tell you that. You full of a whole lot of words and all of them ain't mine, boo. So mm. I have had to learn, even coming out of my 30s, and even now when I get to those stuck points, am I saying what God is saying about me? Oh, bless God. When I wake up, uh, that Beyonce song, I took it a whole nother way, where she say, I woke up like this. I woke up already, love. Hold up, I got I lost. woke up already fearfully and marvelously made, baby. I woke up already in his <laughs> eyes as somebody worth dying for and I have to remind myself of that when I look at the numbers and the numbers not doing what I say and I'm I'm associating that with my worth or when I'm I'm stuck with a client and I don't know I can't help this lady and I'm I'm attaching that to my worth or oh I didn't get that when I wanted that I really wanted to get that speaking engagement and didn't get it and now I'm attaching that to my worth I have to remind me that that's not why I'm worthy yes it's not I'm worthy because of who made me. That gives me the right to take up space just because I'm breathing, I'm worthy. So when I feel stuck, I have to ask myself, who said you were stuck? Mm -mm -mm. Did you say that? Mm -mm. Did the social media people say that? Did the influencers say that? Did the coaches who saying, you're supposed to have $50 million by now if you just take my master class, are they saying that? Am I really stuck? What is God saying about mm. And then I have to make sure that I am filling myself with his words. And y'all, it is an ongoing process, but I always want to be trying to see myself from a place of healing and not letting my trauma and my pain and my fear talk to me. They have to be quiet. Right. And I have to take his word inside. So that's, oh, that's how I get where are we getting our words from? Where are we getting our words from? See, where are they I'm, coming from? I'm, I'm dissecting. I'm going to start dissecting. Okay. And we have, but I love it. The, I love the strategy, not even the strategy, the technical or the tactical that I can, because I'm so logical, right? So mm -hmm. in my head, I'm literally like, a I'm on a tea table. Mm -hmm. And if the word is should, is, is that really for me? Or is it, 
or, or is it over on this side of the table? Mm -hmm. Is that what I said or is that what he told me? Because I'm I'm a should girl. I say I should. I should have did this. I mm -hmm. should have I should have yeah. took a nap. I should have got up and been productive like this. Um, we were talking about that beforehand, but I'm gonna start, I'm I'm gonna start having a tea table. Whose words am I actually that's who? it? Uh, I love that. Mm. Like, oh, I love that. Oh, his words are mine. His words are mine. Let me stop. My words. Come on. And, and his people are your people. You know, mm. I, yes. I think what Wendelin said is so important. And once I started to really love myself more and like me more, the mm. circle changed by itself, baby. Some of mm. these painful, hurtful people, they fell off by default because you're stuck in misery. I heart you. Absolutely. I'm going to pray for you. But yes. some of them fell off by default. And now I got women that will speak into my life. Yes. I got a Wendelin Payne who will walk up to me after we done went out, had a good time at the brunch and we'll walk outside. Oh, you're going to Dubai next week? Well, can I pray with you real quick, sis, before you go get on the plane? See, mm -hmm. he'll send what you need. I got me a Kristen now that yeah. I can call and say, can you, Can we just go out and I just have a little bit of your time because I need to try to yes. understand something. I got a Cynthia who will hook me up with a Kristen. <laughs> but all of that is when uh, I started to just really value myself. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord was like, now I can give you some other people who they, you know, they can speak over you, they can hug you, and when you need it, they can kick you in your butt too, make you stand on up and get up and keep on running. Because mm -hmm. they go help, because that's the other part, BJ, that circle, that yes. community is going to hold you accountable. They care and they love you enough to mm -hmm. not stand beside you in your presence and let you stay in it. Mm -hmm. When I tell you in the past couple of years, some of the sisters in my community have not let me stay to the point. I just was like, let me try to avoid them. I need a break. <laughs> but it goes back to what BJ said earlier in the first part of this conversation. Those are leaders because they see in me what I don't even see for myself. Things I'm doing right now, I'm like, no. You know, I was going to cancel you. I'm like, oh, let it pass. Don't let her think about inviting me. I'm good. With it. No, I'm serious. That was the rehearsing in my mind. But I appreciate that community because I know when they come to me, it's coming out of a place of love. There's mm -hmm. no ulterior motive. They're going to tell me the truth and they're not going to coddle me. Mm -hmm. They're just going to basically give it to me and let me know, okay, you want to grab lunch later on? After they mm -hmm. went to, mm -hmm. and that's what I, but that's what I need because mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't even look the same or my conversation isn't the same and how I move the same in the past year with everything mm -hmm. that's happened in my life. I'm not the same from last year. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I hear y'all saying that y'all made the space for it though. Yeah. Like you have to create the space mm -hmm. for it, like mm -hmm. which means starting with you. So mm -hmm. that you can open up the space for those people, those scenarios, those situations that are yes. for you to get there. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, they won't make it there. It just won't. Or they're going to have won't. a hard time, mm -hmm. hard time getting there. And then we're going to wonder, why is it taking us six months to do something versus three months? Why is it taking right. us six years to get there? And it's because for the last four you know what kind what kind of space did we allow or who right. did we allow in our space or what space did we open or keep closed? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Tell and fear, fear will keep us from that so many times, you know, and, and imposter syndrome, which is just a big word for fear, um, mm -hmm. but procrastination, which is if you dig underneath it long enough, you're going to hit fear. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of times that, that fear will keep you from connecting with the right people. It'll keep you from making that space and you will distract yourself. I used to do this too, honey. I would distract myself with a whole lot of real good things. Mm -hmm. I was doing a whole bunch of real good work, distracting mm -hmm. myself from the God thing because that mm -hmm. was scary. I didn't want to, even that when, when, when I called you or text you to, to hook up Krista to say, Hey, let's, let's hang out. Cause I, we were out to eat and Cynthia said, text her right now. Here's her number. I'm about to, I'm about to text her and tell her to, that you're going to text her right now. Otherwise I would have, I would have, I'm gonna call Krista. Yeah. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. well, I got something else to do, but I'm gonna call her. I'm gonna call her fearful and letting it lead. You got to, you got to kill that monster. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. to, daily, daily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and the honor and even being asked, which which puts me to the point where fear will keep us blocked, right? Because yes. imagine if we hadn't had that conversation. I'm I'm looking for BJ to call me. Like I'm like, you wanna do what? We talking? What? Me? <laughs> yes, ma'am. A lot of times when we think we're seeing ourselves one way, other people are seeing us like mm -hmm. that vision. That vision that you talked mm -hmm. about, the way we 
see ourselves versus the way others see us. Cause I was like, oh yeah, this is dope. Let's have this conversation. I felt mm-hmm. honored. Um, and how many times do we get a chance or how many times do we miss the chance to honor somebody, to make somebody yeah. be honored yeah. to even be around us and to receive our gifts, to receive our energy, to receive our vision. Like we, I said this in a um, uh, stage speech last week, but it's, it's a disservice to other people when we do that. It's a disservice to ourselves and it's a disservice to others when we don't create the space or just Mm -hmm. get over ourselves, right? I love Mm -hmm. it. So let's let's go with vision right quick. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Wendelin. Mm -mm, What's up? I want to add in one other part. You asked the question, then how, you know, how do we make that space for those people to come Mm -hmm. into our lives and and essential, I'm going to summarize, to have that kind of impact. And uh, for me, it's, you have to be honest with yourself that you are not where you know you can be. Mm-hmm. This is not some voice telling you, it's you taking ownership of, I know I'm supposed to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And these people that are now coming into my life, into my community, that, that community, mm-hmm. they're challenging me in a way that they're <laughs> saying, you're supposed to be further because they know what you're capable of doing. Mama, that you they're yeah. not mine. They're your. They're your candy. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Let me see. Let me get. You. Wendell, you muted. Apologize. Uh-uh, there you there you go. Go. We're good. Uh-uh. I just, but that was a journey that I I went through, and I'm still going through that. When God started bringing people into my space, I wanted to get away from them because they were challenging things in me where I wanted to settle. Oh, that's good. I wanted to literally take flight Come on. Come on. because Come on. you're, you're, you're picking at something that is going to put me in an uncomfortable. What I mean by uncomfortable is I now become more visible. So mm-hmm. if I do have anything that I need to work on, it becomes more visible when I'm out front. So let me stay in the background and then they keep, digging into it and I had to re- accept the part that I own mm-hmm. the, it, are, are what is what they're challenging me in be honest with yourself mm-hmm. is it true because mm-hmm. we all we do all know where there are things we're supposed to do and we're just choosing to allow the fear to paralyze us Mm. that we don't move or we're just so this feels so good to be comfortable i'm not challenged so far people like me they like in my page every time they see me they like me but i know i'm supposed to be doing something else that's going to challenge people in high authority or people in my family to do what they're supposed to do to no longer stop uh no longer uh mooch off of their family or no longer do these things but if i do that then i'm not gonna be the one they always talk about oh i just love my niece she just so sweet no i think i'm like she won't let me borrow no more money because you you don't pay her back but does that mean auntie won't love me anymore because i want to be accepted i want to be you know embraced but i'm mm. supposed to be further in that that community they challenged me in the areas where I wasn't being honest with myself. Mm, mm, mm. So that's how you make the space. You got to be honest with yourself. Are they challenging me in areas that I know I'm living beneath what I'm entitled to? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Take the challenge. Be okay. I, Ooh, I think that goes back to being courageous. Up, oh, mm-hmm. I heard it. I mm-hmm. heard it. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I love it. I love it. So then let's talk about going to the future. This is our last serious question, okay? This is our last serious question. Then we're going to stop being serious. Okay. So let's talk about vision though, because that's where we started. Like, I love the mm-hmm. way you set it up for us, BJ. So when we talk about moving forward and you had to say, what is your vision? What does your vision look like for women in the next decade? Um, mm-hmm. and we talk about impacting women's leaderships, the opportunities, the recognition. What does that look like? Your vision next decade because oh we talked about 10 years a minute ago so we're gonna go stick with the decade what are we looking like what's your vision i want to see women mentally free Mm -hmm. i want to see us really living uh that light and free life that god promised Mm -hmm. um y'all the the past couple days i I try not to get too churchy but it is what it is the past couple (laughs) days 
Matthew 11, 28 through 30, the message Bible version has had me in a chokehold. And it talks about, it's the one we've heard so many times, but the message Bible version talks about, you know, bring your come to me if you're burdened, you're worn mm -hmm. out on religion, you're burned out. And it says, I will teach you, how, teach you how to live a light and free life. And I'm like, what? Well, let me find out Jesus the one first started talking about the soft life. Now we all talking about how can we live a soft life and it's already right there. That's so true. What, what do we need to do? What do we need to release? What do we need to unhinge ourselves or unattach ourselves from that is in the way of that light and free life? You know, whatever that looks like. And I get that that looks different for different women. But but that's my vision for us as a whole and for us to also be supporting each other and being that community. My uh, one of my mantras that, that I kind of made up is that sisterhood is imperative to womanhood. And I, I, so, I strongly believe that I want us to be in a place where we are able to lean on each other and able to be vulnerable. Yes. Right. Because we don't have to have the mean girl thing. It doesn't have to exist. If I'm secure with myself, but I want to be able to be vulnerable enough to say, sis, I don't know how to do this. And you don't have to have 50 people in the comment section dragging me down. You just say, well, girl, I can teach you how to do it. And you come on, teach me how to do it. And that's it. So that's on, it. A, on, a, on a wide scale, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to bring yeah. that to us. And so, you know, the role I see myself playing in that is, is in a professional speaking uh, space. Because I have walked that journey, I have been the suicidal person, I've been the depressed person, I have been the person with the panic attacks and anxiety attacks while I'm at the church before the door open and the last one to leave, working, working, working my butt Come off, on. crying all the way there and crying all the way home because I can't shake my own depression. Come okay. On. I, I want to be that person in that space that's on that stage. I'm not even gonna lie, but with my own show. Come on. And and just able to see us in a space where where we have real freedom for yeah. real for real from the inside out i love, oh, yeah. I love, I love that bj uh, uh, I, I don't even know how many quotes I got from that one, but I definitely got sisterhood is imperative to womanhood. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And be and being willing to be there for the next. Like, mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. That's my call to action tonight. That is my call to action. What does your vision look like, Wendelin? Next, well, de next decade, what are we doing? Well, mine is going to be the next phase of after we get what DJ just had envisioned BJ had it envisioned for us, I want to see, and I believe it'll become duplication, meaning women, it'll be so commonplace that we're always developing the next generation. We're always showing them and bringing them along for the journey. We're coaching, we're mentoring. So it continues to be duplication, duplication. Yes, we see the younger ladies out there and they're influenced by social media and other influences. They may not have been exposed in homes that we've been exposed to or been in, a, in different environments, but mm -hmm. in the next 10 years, it is so commonplace for us as women that are in our healed phase or in our majority healed phase that we don't wait till we are completely healed. We are going back and we're saying, hey, sweetheart, mm -hmm. come on with me. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like I'm going to change the world. How about we just impact these three young ladies that your neighbors down the street? How about we just impact the young ladies that work with you? And it's not being overbearing, but it's a simple thing of greeting them every morning, mm -hmm. pulling them over to the side. See, once you develop relationship with people, mm -hmm. then they're more open to receive the constructive feedback because I don't do constructive criticism. I give you constructive feedback and mm -hmm. I make sure that you're in a space to receive it. And that's how we transform the world because women transform the world. Mm -hmm. But if we don't start thinking about the next generation and developing them as we are going up and up and up, then 10 years from now, it mm -hmm. won't be shown. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 my, my passion and my focus is I'm going to impact anybody that I come in contact with. I'm going to impact them for the no. greater. So 10 years from now, it's not that, well, I got me and mine. It's my girls, my feet, my friends and things like that. But we're not truthful with each other. We're not honest with each other. Um, I have, I'm part of this uh, sister circle prayer group. And I love the fact that the young lady, um, I don't know if you all know her. I hope it's okay. Her name's Sharika. She brought us together 
and she modeled the way mm -hmm. of how to be truthful and honest and be sisters for real mm -hmm. and to pray over each other and to cover each other and to be able to, you know, encourage each other. And to, mm -hmm. if I'm in a, in a room, in a space, I speak her name. If there's an opportunity, mm -hmm. I dare not sit in the space and I'm listening to the information and opportunities coming forward. And I have a sister that I know has yeah. integrity, has character and has the skill and competency to do the job. How dare I not speak her name in that room? I love, you, it. love it. That, so 10 years from now, that becomes, it just happens. We don't have to think about it. We just have duplicated <laughs> sisterhood That's being it. imperative to one. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes. It's synergy. I knew, I knew what I was doing. That's one. I of love it. You know what I got out of I what she what I was doing. Oh, I'm kidding. Listen, I, what I got out of what she said was um, speak her name. And I'm I'm like, we need to speak her name while she lives. That was, this, you yes. know, the hashtag say her name. But those women had been brutally murdered and we were saying their names. If we Can we say each other's names more while we live? Say yeah. my name in the right room, sis. I love it, Wendelin. I want it on the shirt. Wendelin, <laughs> BJ. Yeah, that's that's my. Oh, I got too many call to actions. I just don't know. I have to. I got a notepad coming on on my screen over here. I got my list of uh, things to do. But absolutely, saying her name mm -hmm. while she is here. Yes, absolutely. The duplication of this sisterhood to help us as we go into womanhood and through womanhood, and mm -hmm. you know, oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, I said that was our last serious question. Hey, I said that was our last serious question. It is. It, it really was. But no, come on, Wendell. You got it. Come on, you got it. I hear you. I hear you. All I want. All I wanted to say is it goes back to we're women of faith, mm -hmm. and I try to make sure I let people know is that when you see me, you see the reflection of I was raised in the current church that I'm in, and I have to say is that these people poured into me even before I got into the workforce, they went out into the workforce and then they came back. And I, so I saw it in action. They would come in and just in their conversations and spending time with us, tell us about how to go into a workplace, how to conduct yourself and things like that. And so it just, it becomes second nature mm -hmm. that that's the way you do it. And so when I encountered things where it wasn't happening, it just felt off. So that's what I'm saying, even mm -hmm. to be able to acknowledge it because it can appear that you're so we're so far up there that we're unreachable, untouchable to another young lady or another woman, right? Mm -hmm. But in actuality, for us to be able to come alongside them and be able to share with them, saying, "Hey, I heard you were interested in this because you and I have had a conversation at the coffee pot, right? Mm -hmm. So, what about this? This I know. That's what I'm a product of. I, this mm -hmm. shine you see is because a whole lot of people polish me. Ah, ah, I love it. <laughs> Get okay, done, man. Get polished. Oh, you got to put man in the right. polished, man. Get polished. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This was so good. It so was. Good. It was. So I always like for the people to get to know us on somewhat a personal level. So I always play this or that, which is a game I like to play. So if you're gonna get this or that, look at you. You are trying to compose yourself, Wendell. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> but you just gotta go with it. Whatever comes first. All right. So ready. All right, solo travel adventure or staycation with a good book? Solo travel. Solo travel. Solo travel, okay. Weekly family dinners or monthly friends night out? Monthly friends night out. Mo monthly friends. Okay, we are monthly friends. Okay. You can tell we got <laughs> Modern art exhibitions or classical art galleries? Oh. Modern, modern art exhibition. Modern art, okay. What about you, Gwendolyn? Neither. Does either one of them have some music with it? You know what? If they give you headphones for the self-guided tour that you probably yeah, there you go. On, I, they I'm might have some, music for I'm both. Gonna need, I'm going to need some music, yes. <laughs> we just one each one as long as the music is in there, okay? Because yes. classical, they probably play some classical music, modern. You may get something, some modern. You add music to it, I'm much more... And do it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. That works. That works. All right. Somebody said this name tonight. Beyonce's empowerment anthems or <laughs> Taylor Swift storytelling. 
I probably wouldn't know that sweet little boo. She walked up and handed me a thousand dollars. So I'm going with the queen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't know either. So I don't, you okay. know, I, I just, I don't know either. Okay. 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 Yeah. I say for sure for me. Yeah. Okay. I, I probably would go with Beyonce just because I'm not as versed on Taylor. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. And would you say either one, neither one for you, Wendelin. I got you. Inspirational biopics or powerful documentaries. Ooh. I like the inspirational biopics. Okay. I'm going to go with powerful documentaries. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a that's where I learned about the people's life. I get like in their business. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what you, yeah, that's what you get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So here's a quote. We've got two quotes. One says, do not wait for leaders. Do it alone, person to person. And that's by Mother Teresa. The other one says, I raise up my voice, not so I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard by Malala Yosufaze. I apologize if I said that last name wrong, but which, which quote are we going? I'm going with the second one, but I ain't going to pronounce her name. Yeah, I love a mixture of both of those, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. The second one for sure. All right. So it's, I raised up my voice, not so I can shout, but so that those without a voice can be heard. All mm -hmm. right. All right. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Self-care rituals, yoga session or long run? Can it be a long walk? <laughs> I can't run. So I, I, I can't run. So I can't run. Run. Listen, listen my, I was in my community and we did a yoga thing. I'm glad they didn't videotape it. <laughs> this was hilarious. I was no, mm -mm. and I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna go to yoga because I between can't those two, I'm gonna have to say yoga because I don't. Okay. I'm not running, so I would have to say yoga if it was just those two options. Yeah, in that instance, we only got one of the two. All right, okay. learning from okay. leaders: autobiography of a female tech innovator or a historical female political leader. Political. I would do the political. Yeah, okay. definitely. <laughs> She been in the room. I'm not a tech person. Shout out to all my tech folk, tech folks that like to learn about innovation. Afro tech. Uh, yeah, my dad was a historian, so I typically love to like watch history and yeah. listen to history if I had to go between the two. All right, so celebrating milestones, toasting with champagne, or a quiet moment of gratitude. Quiet moment of gratitude for me. Let's yeah. toast it up. <laughs> oh yeah, BJ. And that could be me with my. That still could be by myself. Like you know, I. I, mm -hmm. I, I say, can I? Can I? Home? Can I toast <laughs> as I'm quietly by myself, appreciating? Thank like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, let me see. Fashion and style, classic elegance, or trendy and bold. I am classic elegance. Trendy and bold. Depending on what day it is for me. I typically go classical elegance, but I'm I'm learning to be a little bit more trendy and bold. You know, depending <laughs> on day of the week. I try not to do that. I, I but it's just that's what comes out. I just, you yeah. know, I, formal dress, red chuck tees. That's just what it, it'll be. <laughs> it works and it works and it works. Here's one meditation. We're talking about mindfulness, because we talked about we got our mindful coach on here. So Meditation app or guided breathing exercises? I'm gonna need a guided. App. I'm gonna need a guided breathing exercise. Okay, and you say meditation app or yeah, because I um I need someone to be talking, and usually in the meditation, that's what keeps me kind of focused. If all you're doing is talking about my breathing, my ADHD gonna carry me off into la la land. So somebody's talking <laughs> on the app, I could kind of follow along better. Yeah, yeah, my ther my therapist, we did breathing exercises the other day and she did. She might she might need to say, Kristen, can you hear me? Because uh, <laughs> I started. And we were doing muscle down exercise. You heard of those, BJ? I have not. Oh my gosh. It was like you literally start from here to your toes, but you're muscling down every inch of you. Uh, is that, is that like you're telling your muscle, okay, relax, head, relax, off. neck. Like I you go it. ears, you mm -hmm. go neck, you go shoulder. I was limp. By the end, I was like, between mm -hmm. this breathing exercise, we need to cancel this meeting because I'm I need a nap. Right. <laughs> need a nap. It it helped me. It did center me. Okay, okay. I'm gonna get us back on track. Last one, and this is going to be professional development, networking events, or professional skill building workshops. 
professional skill building workshop for me. Okay. Hmm. That's a hard one. Um, I'm going to say networking events because, um, I'm intimidated a little bit by those, if I'm being honest. So I'm okay. saying that because that's where I need to be. Pushing yourself. Need, so yeah. we, talk, we talk about pushing. Personal I need reflection. to challenge myself. <laughs> Personal yeah. reflection for growth. I love it. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. What are you saying, Wendelin? No, I was just saying that's good because I'm the opposite. I can bounce around in a networking, you know, space, things like that. But for me to retain it and mm -hmm. to take it away with me, I find that when I go to those workshops, I'm I'm zoned in. I'm usually trying to get to the front row because I don't want to see anybody else moving because I want to be able mm -hmm. to absorb it. And it mm -hmm. requires me to sit still. Mm -hmm. But in a networking event, I'm bouncing. And mm -hmm. that's not always productive for me. I need to be sit still. So yeah. but I, listening to BJ, I, I thought that was really good. Look, different different learning styles, learning challenges. Mm -hmm. I love it, I love it, I love it. So that was my this or that. I always just, we get a little bit more insight to our guests. And I think that brings us to a close. This has been a work event of a night. Like, I think we've been to church. We came back from church. We <laughs> went to church and came back. I think we went to Wednesday night service, went to Sunday service. That's it. Um, but today, like, we did personal reflection and growth. And I think- if you did not listen in hard enough, you missed the the tactical, the actionable things that you can do and start today mm -hmm. when you get off of this live with us or when you're watching the replay, because yes, there are people going to be watching this replay. You can start doing these things right now. Um, I've got my tea table. <laughs> I've got um, so many other things getting out of my head, paying attention to my circle. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to be evaluating y'all. Sorry if you want my list. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but it's important. I'm not making yeah. it tonight, but it's important. And I heard all of that loud and clear. And mm -hmm. I hope my audience did. And I want the audience to be able to connect with you all further to your level of comfort. So would you all share how we can connect with you? Because I can go out to eat with both of y'all. But <laughs> how can the audience like either connect with you, support something you have going on, website, whatever? How can we do it? Uh, well, I am BJ Word. I am BJ Word on all the platforms. It's real simple. Six letters. If you just remember BJ W O R D, you can find me. Um, my email address is BJ at BJ Word dot com. Um, as soon as um I start playing and finish uh, with the website, you can go just straight to BJ Word dot com and book a session. <laughs> um, because I am in private practice. Um, or book me to speak for your events, but you don't have to wait on that. You can email me if that's what um if that's the service you need, or find me on social media. Absolutely, BJ at BJ Word dot com. I am BJ Word on all social media. What about you, Gwendolyn? So I can be found on LinkedIn by Gwendolyn Payne. Um, if you ever want to get connected with me, my email address, as far as uh, what I share, is when is energy w y n n i s e n e r g y at gmail dot com. That's how you can connect with me. Uh, as far as uh, what I focus on, as far as project lead, so basically the day of events that you have and you need someone to lead them, I come in and I actually help take the load off of the person that's the visionary and all they have to do is walk in do what they need to do and I take care of all the other stuff and then I'm also a part of STS Enterprise is one of the professional development coaches so those are the three ways you can contact me LinkedIn okay. when is energy at gmail.com and then that's how you do it Man, shout out to STS Enterprise, too. You said STS. I had to give shout out to my okay. guys. Jeremy and Alton, they are doing phenomenal things with STS Enterprise. And uh -huh. you being a coach, like, we all need to give our money to STS Enterprise right now. But get in touch with Wendelin on LinkedIn, Wendelin Payne. You can email her at winisenergy at gmail.com. And if you all have enjoyed even just an inkling of what you got tonight. Uh, Women Leaders Walk the Talk, we do this every month. Uh, we have meetups that are going to be happening. Actually, the first one this year is going to be happening in May. So get ready for that. Um, and you can also always go back and watch this episode and all the other episodes that we've done for the last three years and just pull some nuggets, pull some strategies, pull, um, even if it is you need to feel good, pull one of these episodes, pull tonight's because I promise you there was so many things that I've got to go back and process as well and i encourage the audience to do it and then lastly 
Um, oh, my book is out, 31 Days of Confidence. Yeah. And yes, your score in leadership is now available on pre-order. It will soon be launching March 15th. So you all go ahead and get your pre-orders in. It. Visit my website, which is www.thegreateryouleadership.com. And we're all over social media. Yeah. So please, please um, pick up those nuggets. Follow us. We're on the website everywhere, every social media. We are there. Did you all have anything last you wanted to share? I just wanted to thank you, Kristen, for just giving us this opportunity, inviting us into this space, just caring enough and seeing value enough in our voices to share with your audience. We don't take that for, I know I, I'm not speaking for BJ, but I believe she has the same sentiments that we appreciate that, that how you honored us and honored our voices to make space for us. I thank you. I'm so grateful that there are sisters like yourself in this world that are intentionally making space for women that are leaders that walk the talk. So I thank you for this opportunity. Appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you. I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I had an awesome, awesome time. Um, If I was going to leave anything with the ladies, I I usually give a homework assignment uh, for clients who need it in therapy um, to make a list of 10 things that they like slash love about themselves that don't involve them doing anything for anybody else. Mm. So, this is where some people don't know where to begin. Who am I without all my labels, without mama, wife, CEO, leader, you know, whatever, whatever, label, label, label. They don't know what their ingredients are anymore. It's buried under all of that. And so take enough time with yourself to anybody watching this, make that list. Girl, if you're struggling, you might need to make an appointment and come see me because you should be able to tell me 10 things that you love about you that don't involve doing but just in your being, what is great about you? Because that is the stuff that is going to be there. That's the stuff God put there. It ain't going anywhere. All right. So you need to know what that is. So that's everybody's homework. Come on, BJ, with the homework. Let me, let me get my pen and paper out because I'm going. I'm going to write. <laughs> I got my paper. I, was I love about it. To make my notes. Actionable items. And if we did nothing else tonight, let me definitely say thank you to BJ. Thank you, Wendlin, for coming on. Thank you to the audience that did join tonight. But I honestly think we hit the nail on the head and we talked about all things women, leadership Mm -hmm. and personal reflection and growth and how important it is for ourselves and beyond ourselves, which I think was the even uh, larger part, which is my, I think, core number four, servant leadership. Yeah, I love it. um, I I thank you all. I'm just, I I got all the feels for the night and this has been amazing. If y'all can stay on for a second, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the rest of the world. And it's always like, I like to say, let's lead. Yes. Have a good one.